So, welcome to First Impression Last Review. This is our second, uh, not attempt, but second one of these uh, yeah. segments where we explore tobacco that someone's been smoking on for roughly a month yeah. and someone else uh, has their first try of it. Today I will be doing my uh, review of it, my last review I suppose, uh, because I've been smoking Boson Cut Flake by Garlic and Hogarth. Uh, for a little over, no, it's Boston Cut Plug for a little over a month. And this is Patrick's first yeah. impression. Yep, this is my first go. So let me light it up. Oh, let me see. Oh, wow. That is very different. Uh, let me... So this is an aromatic by Galwith and Hogarth, one of their Lakeland aromatics. I'll just talk a little bit yeah, about the tobacco while I get it going. without having to give away too much. It has uh, a lot of the Lakeland essence, some uh, I think clove oil, and some other elements added into it. I don't want to get too into the detail because I just I don't want to really ham up any of Patrick's review or first impression, but like. Uh, it is a Lakeland blend, an aromatic, which I've been on a kick about lately. Um, something about Lakeland that I just can't seem to get enough of. It's pretty peculiar for me because I don't typically smoke aromatics at all during the winter. And we're in the middle of February, and it's not the coldest uh, of temperatures in Alabama, but it definitely isn't something I gravitate towards when it's cold out. I usually go for warmer, savory tobaccos. Uh, like pretty much your Latakia or maybe Virginia Perique. This year it's kind of been turned on its head in that I'm smoking aromatics almost all winter long. I, I think I have a reason for that, but I'll get to that when I get to it. And I and I will before I you know get too deep into this. I'll say you know I I don't think I've had many Lakeland tobaccos. Um, I know I've had. You know, if we just talk about Lakeland being anything that, you know, Gawain does, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've had Full Virginia Flag, I've had Squadron Leader, Skiff Mixture, uh, Commonwealth. I don't think I've had Grouse more. I've been around you when you smoked it, but I don't think I've had it. So, in terms of what I consider very much a Lakeland, mm -hmm. it would be uh, Grouse more, Kendall Flake, um, Grasmere. Interdell, uh, those are flakes, uh, Boson Cut Plug, Bob's Chocolate Flake, um, there's Glenn Gary, I believe you're right. I saw that the other day. And Rum Flake. Uh, these are like your, I think your mainstays when you talk about Lakeland. Like those are your mainstays. I'm sure there are others. Um, their uh, dark cherry is extremely good, and it's also got like a Lakeland essence. I don't always reach for cherry, but if you were going to smoke a cherry blend, like that would be it. Uh, for Samuel Galwith, no, that was a lot of Galwith and Hogarth. For Samuel Galwith, you have uh, 1792, which is Tonquin. Um, you have Perfection Flake, um, Fire Dance. And uh, there's several more. There's a uh, talisman uh, mixture. There's uh, hmm. well, those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. But yeah. like an aromatic from a Lakeland district is more floral. It would have more what some people could describe as a soapy characteristic or an old lady's purse or perfume characteristic, um, which isn't completely off. There is a lot of like I think. Uh, Hematropin and rose uh, petal water, rose water flavoring. So you're going to get some of those elements, very floral, um, which can really make people turn against those flakes. But that's kind of like kind of a ground level of the Lakeland. Uh, yeah, of all of them, that can be a plot. Right, to that all can be a plot to a lot. This one specifically. Um, they're definitely. I sort of get that, um, sort of that <laughs> old lady handbag feel mm -hmm. more than anything of the characteristic you said. 
it sort of got like a, a subtle sweetness to it. Like sort mm -hmm. of, there's some sweet underneath there. I don't really get the clove. Or I could be, but it's it's very peculiar. But the interesting thing about it, and we've talked about this before, it's an aromatic. But it doesn't feel to me like it's just flavored air, you know. Like, no, the tobacco has a uh, its own thing. Yeah, it, I sort of get a little bit. I'm sure there's Virginia in this, a good bit of it, right? Right. I get a little bit of that toasty that I get when I smoke Virginia, Virginia or straight Virginias. It's an underlying toastiness to it like toasted oats or something. It's very, I would say it's very pleasant. Um, it definitely would be something very nice on a hot day. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not, well, not, it's not a full flavor. You know what I mean? Like it's not, there's not a lot. It's, it's that toast. To me, it's that toasted note. With a little bit of that lady's handbag on top of it, right? Yeah, <laughs> and that and that's what it is. It, and um, um, you know, yeah, that's that's all I'm getting out of it. But it's again, it's the mouth feel is still full bodied, but it's just the flavor is just that. There's, I don't, I'm not really getting any anything more complex than that. I'm, I'm sure. Once I smoke more of it, it'll 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 get you know it'll get more I guess nuanced I guess or more uh, intricate. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It, I'm sort of getting an incense now, and that's more from the the rim note. Like when the smoke comes out, I sort of get a whiff of it. It sort of has an incense smell to it. Yeah, I mean, I I like it. I definitely. I don't know if I would go back to it on a rotation level basis. You know what I'm saying? I think that's sort sort of what some of our criteria here is. Is it a good blend? Is it a bad blend? But in between there, it you know, is it a good blend? But is it good enough to be a rotation blend? And I think it's a good blend. But this would be like an every like a, a come and go kind of blend for me. I think. I can begin, see that, that, begin. This is just a first impression, so my my opinion may change after another smoke of it. So, what, right. you're you know you you've been smoking on it for a while. So, what do you think? Well, while I may not look like an early two thousands goth girl, I do carry a lot of her habits. Some of it being really depressing music, and others having a taste in high school and early college for clove cigarettes, mm. which has almost a saccharine sweetness. Now, mm. the reason why I like cloves, I guess, is because, I, I don't know, I mean, it tasted all right at the time, it seemed like, now I look back on it in embarrassment, but I did smoke a lot of it. Now, what's interesting about this pipe tobacco is that it has that clove oil essence in it. Yeah. And the way they have it blended with the regular tobacco it's pretty, it, it reminds me of clove cigarettes without being so overpowering as to be like a nightmare. Um, and just, it's like, because when you would smoke a clove cigarette, you could almost taste the sugar coming out of the filter. Um, this doesn't do that. Even though there's a subtleness and a spice to it, the clove oil really does shine with the Virginia in such a way that, like, it feels, um, well, I can tell you this, it tastes really good with a cup of tea, like, mm. so it does, it definitely has this sort of uh, Eastern kind of aroma. I've traveled a little bit, and I've been to various markets, and I'm not talking about in the States either, and some of that, that sort of exotic, you know, spice market kind of yeah. vibe that you get, especially when you're going into like a bazaar or something like that. That really comes through in this. Um, if you've ever been to like Saudi Arabia or like the Middle East and you've ever been to a bazaar, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, I think there's a lot of Asian bazaars that have kind of the same thing going on. They just have a certain 
way about them. Um, I can't really speak too much for like far, far east, like uh, like your Vietnam or Japan or China or Thailand or Cambodia, but like you know, like I've been to enough to know that like some of those spice markets or even an Asian market, kind of like a local one, kind yeah. of has like these exotic sort of smells and flavors that yeah. this tobacco really reminds me of, which is really enjoyable. If you pair it with a couple of things, be it like, depending on what you're doing, like if you paired this with like a glass of milk or whatever, it definitely gives off a lot of Christmas vibes. If you have it with oh. tea, it does make your tea sort of more like a chai tea, like um, oh. where you have like more of an Indian flair to everything. I like it. I think it's a very versatile tobacco. It's probably up there with some of the best aromatics that you can get from Godwith and Hogar because it's so different. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, if you're just used to aromatics from, say, your local tobacconist that they blend in house, this is really probably going to be completely different because the tobacco do is not muted by any of the flavoring. Um, it actually is elevated quite extensively. I think the reason why, like I mentioned earlier, I've been so into aromatics is because the way COVID sort of cut off the holidays, I've been on this weird spice kick, um, which I think I sort of quell at the end of the holiday season because mm -hmm. I'm used to like your cakes and everything, mm -hmm. a lot of cinnamon and everything, and I just don't yeah. think I had that. And even when you go to a store and you smell those uh, cinnamon like brooms I think yeah, is what they are yeah. like or you go to a house and they're making like mold wine or something like that all of those like really strange and strong exotic kind of flavorings I just didn't get this year so I think that's the reason why I've been really heavy into your aromatics yeah um, with God with the, the aromatics with God with Hogarth because they just have such a specific spice profile cinnamon clove rum chocolate that it really is sort of like my holdover from the holiday, and I think it's why I've carried it so far this year. That and those aren't, and they're also not easy to find. So when I did get them, I got them in early December. Most of mm -hmm. the aromatics that I've acquired. So because Christmas was sort of, I mean, everything with COVID's been sort of a bust. I'm not saying we didn't celebrate or I didn't see family, but there's just something about like the full arc of a holiday season without this pandemic mess. Um, and then there's like what we got this year so I think that's the reason why I'm on this aromatic kick is because of the spices that sort of kind of have elevated the lackluster Christmas experience that I had and that makes sense as I you know as I smoke a little bit more of it I see went well oh let me backtrack a little bit before we smoked the blend, you had mentioned, you know, it had a little bit of a clove essence. And I smoked, um, you know, a handful, maybe two handfuls of <laughs> clove, clove cigarettes in my college days. And that's what I was expecting, was that overpower clove. And it's definitely not that. It, it's, it's, the, it's the essence of that. But it's not, it's not that overpower clove cigarette. And that sort of threw me for a loop because I was expecting that overpower. But... I prefer this because it, it, it gives you a little bit of that, but again, that what I love about Virginia's, that toastiness and that little bit of, um, sometimes they can get a little sour sometimes, I guess when they're paired the right way and mm -hmm. whatnot, but you get a little bit of that. Um, it's just enjoyable. Like I, I, uh, it's real light, and again, I don't mean light as in like it's just flavor and there's nothing else. You know, there's just there's there's just added flavor, nothing else. But it's I don't know. In, in you know, taking in the smell of it, you know, again the room note. As much as we can get a room note, room note on a screened-in porch, um, it smells like a pipe shop. I don't know why I get that feeling, but it it smells like I've, I just walked into a, a pipe shop, kind of. You know, and a lot of times a pipe shop probably, from my experience is dominated by the cigar smell than more than it is the the pipe smell and this may be sacrilege sacrilege but I cigar smoke is too overpowering to me you know what I'm saying right like when I leave a, a shop that's there's been a lot of cigar smoke and it's it's pretty heavy you know I don't think pipe smoke does that you know pipe smoke doesn't stick to you like that 
But not just that. I mean, if, I feel like it is a, a little bit more difficult to retrohale a cigar than it is a pipe. Oh, really? Well, the, the, pipe, the, pipe, the cigar is just... You can do it. It's not impossible. I wouldn't say that that's impossible. And maybe I'm just weak in terms of my sinuses or something. But like, yeah. it just seems like it's a little bit more robust. And because the cigar is the way it is, because you're chewing basically on tobacco leaves, you're chewing on them so much so that it's almost like you got a dip in your mouth too. If you're like me, I sort of chew on my cigars a little bit. Yeah. So you're smoking and you're sort of getting that flavor from just direct contact with the leaf. Um, Cigar is kind of the one-stop shop for all tobacco consumption, you know, outside of snuff. I mean, if you could take a hit of snuff and then smoke a cigar, you'd really be covering all your bases. Yeah. Because you have a lot of, uh, you know, saliva build up just from the leaf and just that being in your mouth. And then if you're like me, I kind of chew on them a little bit because I like chewing tobacco in general. And then you smoke. And so it's just kind of like everything. So the flavor isn't really something you sort of have to hunt as like aggressively like you would with a pipe yeah um because the flavor is just sort of all there washing around in your mouth um with a pipe you sort of have to there's some a little bit of nuance a little bit of like coaxing out the different flavors the cadence to how you smoke can be important uh how dry the tobacco is can be important there's not as much with a cigar it's like clip light smoke yeah it's uh, prepared for you but it is stronger which means that, yeah, you're going to get regular flavor out of the cigar without having to retrohale. But if you do retrohale, you are going to have a more robust <laughs> kind of blast to your sinuses and through your nostrils because it's just so powerful. Mm -hmm. But I would say, you know, if you can get your hands on this, it's definitely interesting enough. You're, if you're just a normal pipe smoker, what I call a normal pipe smoker, someone who smokes... Straight Virginia vapors, some Burley blends, some English blends, right? This is, or and maybe some Oriental, Oriental blends. This is something different. This is something that is, would be unique, and it'd be uh, nice to grab to again on a hot day for me. But it does seem like um, what I would call a fantasy blend. Mm -hmm. Like if you're ever wondering what maybe like a wizard would smoke, yeah, I feel like this is probably a good tobacco too like if someone's like let me smoke something like a wizard smokes bosun cut plug seems like that because it's kind of has an <laughs> exotic spice profile and is uncharacteristic to the other blends yeah. or aromatics that I've smoked specifically from Gawa and Hogarth this is sort of this it has a real eastern vibe I swear and uh, yeah. I think that just, just because you know I think uh, Indonesia is really known for their clove cigarettes mm. and maybe that's just the vibe I'm getting just from the clove oil but I think this is definitely something I'm going to keep around uh, as far as like aromatics and a rotation yeah. for me. Maybe, maybe not. It's definitely going to be something I want to pull out during Christmas. But you know, if you're looking for something that to rotate, I would definitely suggest like a rum flake or a Bob's chocolate flake. Okay. Well, I think that's, that wraps it about up for this. Definitely check it out if you can, and um, we'll see you the next time. Yep. Thank you.